Shalom. Happy Sabbath to everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. Ready to get back into the word of Yahweh. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go to the book of St. Luke, chapter 19, beginning at verse 1, all the way down to verse 48. St. Luke, chapter 19. You got your scriptures? All right. Verse 1. And having entered, he was passing through Yeriho. So Luke is a physician. He's a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the ten tribes of the northern kingdom of Israel that were scattered among the Japheth Gentiles. All of the twelve tribes of Israel are scattered. The ten tribes of the northern kingdom were scattered first. And when they were scattered, they were no longer referred to as Israel or Ephraim. They were referred to as Gentiles. All the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation are written to the chosen people. And you have to understand that to keep the scriptures in context. If you don't, you're going to take the scriptures out of context. And that's why you have all these different religions, especially Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. They take the scriptures out of context. The Most High doesn't have anything to do with any religion. <laughs> he only comes to save his people from their sin. Just ask your question, what religion was Adam? What was re what religion was uh, Noah or uh, Abraham? Uh, what religion was the disciples? What religion was Jesus? They, Yahweh Shai, Jesus. They wasn't part of any religion. The Pharisees was a part of a religion called Judaism. And the Apostle Paul was a part of that religion. <laughs> he said, I prospered in the Jews' religion, Judaism. But the, Yahweh Shai, Jesus, didn't have anything to do with Judaism. Anyone, anywhere, anybody can be a part of any religion. That's why people call themselves Jewish because it's a part of a religion. You can be a Jewish because it's a part of Judaism. But the people of the tribe of Judah or the southern kingdom of Judah consists of Judah and Benjamin. They were called Jews. They're, they're a people. They're not a religion. But people don't understand the context of the scripture. And they refer to all 12 tribes of Israel as Jews, which is not correct. Because only the southern kingdom of Judah, with Judah and Benjamin, are Jews. They're a people. But Jews is not a religion. Jews is a people. Jewish is a religion. <laughs> it's part of Judaism. And so, these are the context of the scriptures that you have to keep in mind when you're studying the scriptures. So, Yahweh Shai, Jesus, he's passing through Jericho. He's on his way to Jerusalem. Verse 2. And they see a man called Zakai, and he was chief tax collector, and he was rich. So as he was passing through Jericho, he saw this guy named Zakai. Zakai is a tax collector, and he's very rich. That's what the scripture says. He's, he was rich. Uh, verse 3. And he was seeking to see who Yahweh Shai was. But was unable because of the crowd, for he was a small, but he was small in stature. So, uh, Zakai, did I pronounce his name? Yeah, Zakai, Zakai, Zakai. He was small in stature, and he couldn't see Yahweh Shai, and so he wanted to see Yahweh Shai as he was passing by. Verse four. And having run ahead, he climbed up into a tree, a sycamore tree, <laughs> to see him because he was about to pass by. So Zakai, 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 he wanted to see Yahweh Shai, but he couldn't see him because he was small. And so there was this tree, a sycamore tree, and he figured, well, the only way I'm going to get to see Yahweh Shai, Jesus. I got to climb up in this tree. Because if I don't climb up in this tree, then I'm, gonna, I'm not going to get a chance to see him. It's too many people. So he climbed up in the tree. Verse, verse 5. And as Yahweh Shai came to the place, 
he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zakai, Harry, and come down, for I have for I have to stay at your house today. <laughs> so Yahweh Shai Jesus looked up. He saw Zakai in the tree. Hey, 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 hey Zakai. He knew his name already. <laughs> you have to understand how the scriptures are. The most high they we, it's a tale that's already been told. This, everything that's happening have to happen. It's then and now. Everything, everything that's happening in the earth have to happen. And you may not always understand it, but it has to be that way. So Zakai was up in the tree. Yahweh Shai, Jesus said, come down, Zakai. I got to stay at your house today. Verse 6, and he hurried and came down and received him rejoicing. So Zakai, <laughs> he was excited. He came on down. Because Yahweh Shai, Jesus, was going to dine with him today at his house. Verse 7, and seeing it, all, they all grumbled, saying, He has, he has gone, in, gone in to stay with the man who is a sinner. So this is all the religious folk. And so that's what people who are religious, they don't understand because they think it's about a religion. These people are Judaism. The ones that grumbling and mumbling <laughs> and seeing it, they all grumbled. All these religious folks, all these Jewish people, all the people that are part of Judaism are grumbling, mumbling. He has gone in to stay with a man who is a sinner. Because if you're part of a religious, you got to follow a lot of rules. <laughs> But Yahweh Shai wasn't a part of any religion, so he didn't have to follow all of these rules. And so all these religious folk, the Pharisees and the scribes, and all of their followers are Jewish. And so that's what you have to understand, because they, they're part of a religion. Jews are a people, but Jewish or Judaism is a religion. And if you're a part of Judaism... You don't have to be a Jew. You can you can still practice the religion, Judaism, and you, you're called Jewish. But some of the people, they want to be real Jews. But you can only be a real Jew if you're, if you're born a Jew of the seed of, of Judah, of the tribe of Judah. That's the only way you can be a Jew. But people don't understand the scriptures and... That's why they don't know who the real chosen people are. All the tribe of Judah with Benjamin have been scattered into all the earth according to scripture. Yahweh Shai said, you're going to be, you're going to fall by the edge of the sword. You're going to be led away captive into all nations and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time that the Gentiles are fulfilled. And so when he said Jerusalem is trodden down of the Gentiles, Jerusalem not as on, not only refers to the land but the people. <laughs> we are Jerusalem, all of the the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin. We're we're Jerusalem. We're trodden down of the Gentiles even unto this day. He said until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. So that's why we're in the situation that we're in because we didn't obey the scriptures. We didn't believe the scriptures, and you're gonna see that continuously as we go on. All the the, the southern kingdom and some of the people of the northern kingdom, they refuse to accept Yahweh Shai as the Messiah. And so that's what the crux of Judaism is. It, it, Judaism does not accept Yahweh Shai Jesus as the Messiah, as the Son of God. They're, they're stuck in their religious mode. And then Christianity, <laughs> Christianity doesn't accept that Jesus is only coming back for the to, for Israel. Christianity said Jesus is coming back for everybody. He's coming to save everybody. That's a lie. He's not coming to save everybody. So that's a that's why Christianity is a religion. It's a false doctrine. In Islam, they just like uh, Judaism. They want to stick to the law, but they don't want to accept Yahweh Shai as the, the Messiah. And so that's why you have all these different religions, because they take the scriptures out of context. Verse 8, And Zechariah stood up and said to the master, 
Look, master, I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have taken whatever from anyone by false accusation, I, re I repay fourfold. So Zakai, <laughs> he was born, uh, born again. He believed the, the gospel of the kingdom. He heard what Yahweh Shai was saying about, you know, giving. <laughs> and, and, and it's hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom. So he said, I'm going to get rid of all these possessions because I want to enter into the kingdom. <laughs> so he said, I gave all half of my possessions to the poor. And whatever I've taken by false accusation, I've repaid fourfold. So he's trying to, you know, do right so that his name can stay in the book of life. Hallelujah. Verse 9. And Yahweh Shai said to him, Today deliverance has come to this house since he also is the son of Abraham. And so Yahweh Shai confirms that Zakai is accepting the gospel of the kingdom because he's following and obeying the scriptures. He's believing the scriptures and he's doing what the scripture says. He's ex accepting Yahweh Shai as the Messiah, as the savior of Israel. <laughs> he's giving his half of his riches to the poor and he's re restoring what he's taken by false accusation and Yahweh Shai says deliverance has come to this house to Z Zakai since he is also a son of Abraham and so that's why I'm telling you Zakai is a Jew he's of the tribe of Judah and all in the, the southern kingdom with Judah and Benjamin are Jews the rest of the ten tribes of the northern kingdom are not Jews. They were called Israel. But when they sinned before the Most High, he scattered them among the Japhet Gentiles. And when he scattered them, they're no longer referred to as Israel. They are referred to as Gentiles or uncircumcision or Greeks or whatever location where they're living. But uh, Zakai, he's a Jew. And so he is a son of Abraham. And that's all Yahweh Shai come to save is all of the 12 tribes of Israel, the southern kingdom of Judah with Benjamin and the northern kingdom of the 10 tribes that are scattered. People want to go on saying the lost tribes. They're not lost in the sense that don't nobody know where they are. Yahweh Shai knows exactly where they are and who they are. And Yahweh the, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob knows exactly where they are and who they are. So they're not lost. When he made the reference to the lost sheep, he was talking about their, their salvation. They was lost because they, they needed salvation. <laughs> That's what the context of it is. But people take the scriptures out of context and say the lost sheep or the lost tribe. They don't know what you're talking about. They're not lost in the sense don't nobody know where they are. And most people don't understand that Israel is two separate kingdoms. That's why you got to study and you got to keep the scriptures in context. Because when you get to the New, New Testament, if you don't understand the Old Testament, you're not going to understand the New Testament. Israel is still, even to this day, two separate kingdoms. The northern kingdom is Israel or Ephraim, but when we sinned, they were no longer called Israel or Ephraim. They were called Gentiles. And now the, the, the northern kingdom is, is scattered. Also, we're scattered the furthest <clears throat> through the uh, <clears throat> Atlantic slave trade. <clears throat> we're no longer referred to as Judah. We're no longer referred to as Jews. <laughs> what? Yeah, we're not. We're referred to as whatever location where we're living. They don't even call it, well, they, yeah, they want to try to say we're Gentiles. They want to say we, we, we're part of Ham. They want to say we're Canaanites. But we're Japhet, we're, we're Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham. That's who we are. <laughs> the, the southern kingdom of Judah with Benjamin. We're Hebrew Israelites. We're of the tribe of Judah. We're of the kingdom of Judah. That's who we are. We are Jews. The world would never accept us as who we are. That's why they labeled us all those different names. 
and we should not accept any of those names or titles. Our birthright is we are of the seed of Abraham. We are of the tribe of Judah. We are Hebrew Israelites. That's who we are. That's what we should be going by. No other title. We shouldn't go by black. No, there's no nation called black. There's no nation called white. But I'm not talking about them. <laughs> so we shouldn't be black this or black that or African American or any other title they want to call us by. Or wherever we are, we are Hebrew Israelites. That's the title that we should label ourselves. Because if we waiting for them to label, they're going to call us whatever they want to call us. But the scripture already told us who we are. We just have to believe what it says. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 10. For the sons of Adam has come to seek. Excuse me. For the son of Adam ha has come to seek and to save what was lost. Yeah. So Yahweh Shah, he said for the son of Adam. He's referring to himself as the son of Adam. And so that's why the scriptures are written in context. That's why the scriptures are for all the 12 tribes of Israel, because Yahweh Shai, he's the second Adam. So he is for the 12 tribes of Israel. It's not for the whole world. And people try to say, oh, it's for humanity. It's not about humanity. If you think that, you are deceived. There is no covenant with humanity. There is no covenant with all of the people of the world. Otherwise, he wouldn't have chosen people. Well, you know, he just had them so that he could bring... He has a covenant with the chosen people. They're the, pe they're the reason why Yahweh Shai came. To give his life to those that are under the law. To redeem them. <laughs> For all of the 12 tribes of Israel. You can try to doctor it up and fix it however you want to justify your religion. But you're dead wrong. And you're going to see that in a little while because people always do that. They try to justify everything with their religion. You, all religions are anti-Christ. If you're part of any religion, you're part of the anti-Christ church system. Catholicism, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Buddhism, Hinduism, Seven Day of Venice, Mormonism, Jehovah Witness. All religions are anti-Christ. Every last one of them. Yahweh doesn't have anything to do with any religion, nor does Yahweh shy Jesus. He only come to save his people, all of the twelve tribes of Israel, from their sin. Yahweh shy the son of Adam, has come to seek and to save what was lost. What was lost? The twelve tribes of Israel. That's what's lost, because we stopped obeying the commandments. <laughs> we stopped following Yahweh. Especially the ten tribes of the northern kingdom, they were scattered first. And now, the southern kingdom of Judah, with Benjamin, because we're practicing a, Juda a religion called Judaism. We're lost. We have to come out of all these different religions. And that's why Yahweh Shai came. That's why he gave his life. That's why he rose on the third day. And that's why he's coming back. He's coming back for all of the twelve tribes of Israel. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 11. And as they were hearing this, he spoke another parable because he was near Jerusalem. And they thought the reign of Elohim was about to be manifested straight away. And so they understood that the kingdom of Yahweh was going to come. And so Yahweh Shai, he spoke to them a parable. Because they didn't understand who exactly who he was or how the kingdom was coming. They said, well, when, when the Messiah is here, the, the, we're going to rule again with him, which is right. But they didn't understand why he came the first time. He, this time that he, he's here, he only came to give his life for all of the 12 tribes of Israel. But they didn't understand that. And so he, he put forth this parable so that they could have a better understanding then and now. Verse 12. He therefore said a certain nobleman went to a distant country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And so he's referring to himself. <laughs> he's calling himself the nobleman. He's going to a distant country, going back to the father. 
And he says when he's returned to, to receive himself a kingdom and to return. And so when he's coming back, he's going to bring, he's going to have, bring the kingdom of heaven on earth for the 12 tribes of Israel. Restore the kingdom to Israel. It was asked him when he rose from the dead by the disciples, are you going to at, at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? So the kingdom is going to be restored to Israel. He said, not at this time. It's not for you to know. But it, it's going to be restored. That's why he came. And so when he returns, that's exactly what he's going to do. So he's letting us know through this verse that I'm going to restore the kingdom to Israel to receive for himself a reign, a kingdom, and to return. Verse 13. And calling ten of his servants, he gave them ten minas and said to them, Trade until I come. Minus is money or, or talents or, or gold or silver or, 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 or you know, it represents gifts. So he gave his, his servants gifts and said to them, Trade until I come. And he it was ten servants. And so it's representing Israel, specifically the, the, the northern kingdom of the ten tribes that are scattered. He, he gave them gifts. And he said, okay, these are your gifts to, for you to use for the kingdom of heaven, to work, until I come back. Verse 14, but his subjects were hating him and sent a delegation after him to say, we do not wish this one to reign over us. So these are the religious folk. These are the Judaism people. They practice Judaism saying that Yahweh Shah is not the Messiah. So no, we don't want him to reign over us. And so this is why he's bringing this point out. His subjects were hating him. People that's of the religion of Judaism. People who are Jewish. The scriptures say, I know those who call themselves Jews and are not. They are of the synagogue of Satan. And so everyone that's practicing any religion, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, you have, the, you have Satan, the synagogue of Satan. You're not going to be saved unless you repent and come out of those religions. Well, Christian want to say, well, we believe in Jesus, yeah, but you take him out of context. You think he's coming back for everybody. He's not. He's only coming back for the 12 tribes of Israel. And so all of these people of this religion, these religions are saying, we, we don't want him to reign over us, especially Judaism and Islam. Verse 15, and it came to be when he came back, having received the kingdom, that he sent forth he sent for these servants to whom he had given silver in order to know what each had gained by trading. And so even then, it's still not, this, the way it was then is the same way it is now. When he went away, he gave gifts unto men, unto all of the twelve tribes of Israel. All of us, he gave gifts unto us. And when he comes back, he's going to come back. The scripture says he's going to reward Every man according to his works. All of the 12 tribes of Israel, we are all going to be rewarded according to our works. So he's giving us gifts. What are you doing with your gifts? Because he's going to judge you according to your works. That he sent for, for these servants to whom he had given the silver in order to know what he each had gained by trading. If you still got the same gift and nothing has happened... You're going to be in trouble. <laughs> Verse 16. And the first came saying, Master, your minus, your mina has earned ten minas. Your gift, your talent, your silver, your gold has earned ten. You gave me one, but now it's multiplied ten times. <laughs> He's been busy. He's been working for the master. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that's what's going to happen to everyone that's obeying the scriptures and doing what the scripture says to do. They're going to be rewarded. They're going to bring forth fruit. That's what this is talking about. If you're not bringing forth any fruit, you're going to be in trouble. What are you doing for the kingdom? Verse 17, And he said to him, Well done, good servant. 
because you were trustworthy in a small matter, have authority over ten cities. And so this servant, he was uh, uh, trustworthy in a small matter. His, his, his talents, his gift, earned him ten other talents and gifts. And now he's being put over ten cities. And so that's what's going to happen when Yahweh Shai comes back. According to your works, you're going to be rewarded. Whatever you've done. And if you multiply your gifts and your talents, it's going to be multiplied unto you in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 18. And the second came and, and saying, Master, your mina has earned five minas. And so the second one is the same way. He His talent, his gift, he put it to work, to good use. He didn't just sit around and do nothing say, I got a gift, but didn't do anything with it. <laughs> And so he used his gift and he earned five more talents or, or gifts along with the one that he had. Hallelujah. Verse 19. And he said to him also, and you be over five cities. And so when Yahweh Shai came back, he was rewarded for all the work that he has done with the gifts and the talents that he had for gaining five. And now he's over five cities. Hallelujah. Verse 20. And another came saying, Master, here is your mina, your gift, your talent, <laughs> which you gave me, which I kept laid up in a handkerchief. I, I, I told everybody I had a gift, but I didn't do anything with it. I just put it in this handkerchief because I didn't want to lose it. <laughs> I wanted to make sure I could give it back to you if you wanted it back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 20. For I was afraid of you because you are a hard man. You take up what you did not lay down and you reap what you did not sow. So I didn't want to lose it. So I didn't want to do anything with it. But I knew you were a hard man. And if I had lost it, you would have been mad at me. Because I know you're a hard man. You take up what you don't lay down and you reap what you do not sow. And so this guy... His gifts, his talent, he wrapped it up in a handkerchief, buried it in the ground, didn't want nobody to take it from him. He didn't use it. He didn't do anything with it. And that's how a lot of people are today, of all the 12 tribes of Israel. They're not obeying the scripture. They're not using their gifts and talents that the Most High has given unto them. And they just sit and go into these 501c3 corporations think they're doing the work of the Most High, the work of the kingdom, but they're not. They're just sitting on their laurels, and they think they're profiting and bringing forth fruit, and they're not doing anything. And so they're like this man. Verse 22, And he said to him, Out of your own mouth I shall judge you, you wicked servant. You knew what I was... You knew that I was a hard man, taking up what I did not lay down and reaping... What I did not sow. So Yahweh Shai is saying to this servant, you're going to be judged out of your own mouth because you're a wicked servant. You already knew that I'm a hard man. You already knew that I take up what I don't lay down and I reap what I do not sow. And so because you already knew that, you're going to be judged out of your own mouth. And so what he said then is what he's saying now. Everyone that's not doing what they know to do, they have a gift to speak and to teach and to preach and to share the word of Yahweh and you just sitting back, not saying anything, sitting on your hands and just watching TV and video games and all the other stuff, going to basketball games and whatever else you want to do. You're not doing the work of the kingdom. You're going to be judged according to your works. Hallelujah. Verse 23. Why did you not put the silver in the bank? That when I came, I could have collected it with interest. Why didn't you go to work? Why didn't you do anything with the gift and the talent that I gave to you so that you can bear some fruit? <laughs> you don't have anything to show for what you've done since I've given you the gift or the talent. And so you don't have any fruit. Your house shy is coming back. And if you're not bearing fruit, you're not going to get into the kingdom of heaven. Because faith without works is dead. Anybody can say, yeah, I believe. Okay, you show me how, that you believe by your works. Faith without works is dead. You can't just say you believe and don't do anything. 
If you think that you can just get in the kingdom of heaven, talking to all the 12 tribes of Israel, just by saying, oh yeah, I accept Yahweh Shai as the Messiah, and that's it. Okay, well, prove it. <laughs> Show me that you believe it. But, folks, why go to church on Sunday? <laughs> why go to the to the temple or the synagogue on Saturday, the Sabbath? That's not enough. That's not bringing forth fruit. You know, you do supposed to keep the Sabbath, but you got to bring forth some fruit. Hallelujah. Verse 24, then he said to those who stood by, take the mina from him, the gift, the talent, and give it to him who possessed ten minas, ten gifts, ten talents. So he, he, he's worthless. He's not good for anything. Take take all the gifts and talents th th that he had. Take it away from him and give it to the one that has ten. <laughs> so this is what happening to this guy that didn't use his gift and his talent. Whatever he have is being taken away from him. And the same thing that's happening to him is going to happen to a lot of Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham when Yahweh shall returns. Whatever gifts and talent the Most High has given you and you're not using it, it's going to be taken away from you and it's going to be given to those that are bringing forth fruit. Verse 25. But they said to him, Master, he already possessed ten manas, meters, ten gifts, ten talents. He already got ten. And you're going to give what... This other person, he only got one. You're going to take it away from him and give it to him that has ten? Is that right? Is that fair? You're going to ask the Most High, is that right? Is that fair? Of course it's right. Of course it's fair. This is judgment. Judgment is without mercy. This is the time for mercy, but you better do what's right. If you're not doing what's right during the time of judgment, there will not be any mercy. So yes, take it away from him that didn't do anything with his gift and his talent and give it to the one that has ten. He's not worthy to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Verse 26. For I say to you that everyone who possesses shall be given and from him who does not possess even what he possesses shall be taken away from him. From him. And so Yahweh Shai is making it plain and making it simple. He's like, look, you want to get into the kingdom of heaven, you better be doing something for the kingdom of heaven. You're not going to get into the kingdom of heaven just by saying, I believe that Yahweh Shai is the Messiah. And then you don't have anything to show for it. You don't have any fruit. You're not using your gifts and your talents to bring forth any fruit to, to say that. You, you believe. You're just saying words. You're worshiping me with your lip, but your heart is far from me. <laughs> and so the same way it's happening in this parable is going to happen when Yahweh Shai comes back. A lot of people are not going to make it into the kingdom of heaven because they're not doing what the scripture tells them to do. But the ones that are obeying the scripture and doing what the scripture says to do, they believe the scripture, they obey it, and they do what it says. They keep the commandments and statutes and laws. And they believe Yahweh Shai, that he's the Messiah of Israel. And they're bringing forth fruit. Much will be given unto them. To everyone who possess shall, shall be given. Hallelujah. But for him that does not possess, whatever he possess shall be taken away from him. Because he's not bringing forth any fruit. Verse 27. But those enemies of mine who did not wish me to reign over them, bring them here and slay them before me. Yes, hallelujah, amen. This is judgment. There is no mercy in judgment. All those people of the religious sect, Judaism, Islam, Christianity, all religions, you're not following the scriptures. Yahweh Shai is not coming back for any religion. He's coming back for a people. All of the chosen people of the 12 tribes of Israel whose names are written in the book of life. Who believe the gospel of the kingdom and are bringing forth fruit. And if you don't want your house shot to reign over you, this is what's going to happen. You're not believing the scriptures or doing what the scriptures tell us to do. 
You're going to be brought before the Most High, brought before Yahweh Shai, and slay them before me. That's what's going to happen to you. You're going to be cast into the lake of fire. Verse, 27, verse 28. Yeah, verse 28. And having said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. And so Yahweh Shai ain't playing. <laughs> So y'all can stop playing church. Church is out. All these Sunday services and all these religious, all these 501c3 corporations, come out of her, my people. Yahweh Shai is calling for a people. He's not calling for any religion. You need to be a part of any religion to serve Yahweh Shai. <laughs> and if you, you're part of these religions, you're going to get caught up and, and then miss out on the kingdom of heaven. And so he went on toward Jerusalem because that's where he was headed. Verse 29. And it came to be when he came near to Beth Pagi and Beth Anya at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his taught ones. And so now he's coming into Jerusalem and he's fulfilling the scriptures because everything that has been written must be fulfilled. All the scriptures, every last one of the prophecies in the scriptures will be fulfilled. And it's being fulfilled right before your very eyes, right even today, right now, this second. <laughs> Everything is being fulfilled. We are where we are because of prophecy. We had to be scattered. All of the 12 tribes of Israel are scattered. We have to be who we are. That's why people don't know who we are, because we're scattered. We're a byword. That's why we go by all these different labels. The Most High is trying to wake us up. A lot of us waking up, but a lot of us not waking up. Hallelujah. Verse 30, saying, Go into the village opposite you, in which as you enter, you shall find a coat tied, on which no one has ever sat. Loose it and bring it here. So he's talking to a couple of his disciples to tell them to bring him a coat that is tied up and no one has ever sat on this coat. He said, when you see it, loose it and, and, and bring it to me. And it's in, it's in a village going toward Jerusalem. Verse 31. And if anyone asks you, why do you loosen it? Thus you shall say to him, because the master has need of it. So he's giving his disciples specific instructions to bring him this coat, to loose it and bring it to him. He's saying, if someone asks you, what are you doing? Why are you loosing the coat? Tell him the master has need of it. <laughs> That's all you got to say. Verse 32. And those who were sent went away and found it as he had said to them. So they obeyed Yahweh Shai's commandments, his instructions, and went to get the coat. They found the coat. They're getting ready to loose it and bring it to you. How was <laughs> Verse 33. And as they were loosing the coat, the owners of it said to them, why do you loosen the coat? <laughs> and so they're following Yahweh Shai instruction. And just as Yahweh Shai told them, if someone asks you why you loosen it, this is what you have to say. And that's what they did. They asked him, why do you loose the coat? Verse 34. And they said, the master needs it. <laughs> So they obeyed the scripture. They did what Yahweh Shai told them to do. That's all we have to do is obey the scripture, do what he told us to do. And that's it. It's not complicated. Verse 35. So they brought it to Yahweh Shai and throwing their garments on the coat, they set Yahweh Shai on it. And so this is prophecy being fulfilled. This was recorded in the prophets. All of the prophets and the laws would be fulfilled. All the, all the Psalms. Everything that's spoken of of, of Yahweh Shai and everything that is spoken of all of the 12 tribes of Israel, everything, all the prophecies will be fulfilled. And so this was prophesied that it was going to happen that Yahweh Shai will come into Jerusalem riding on a coat. And so they're throwing their garments on the coat and they're setting Yahweh Shai on the coat. Verse 36. And as he went in, they were spreading their garments on the way. So everyone, 
uh, that was there that believed the gospel of the kingdom, they spread their garments on the way before Yahweh, before Yahweh shy as he was riding on the coat. Verse 37, And as he was coming near, already at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the entire crowd of the tight ones began rejoicing to praise Elohim with a loud voice for all the miracles that they had seen. And so all of the believers, all of the, the, the children of Israel of the southern kingdom of Judah, with Judah and Benjamin, that believe in the gospel of the kingdom, they was praising Yahweh as the Messiah, as the Messiah. They was praising Yahweh of, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to praise Elohim with a loud voice for all the miracles they had seen. They was giving giving thanks and giving praise and giving honor and glory. Hallelujah. Verse 38. And blessed is the sovereign who is coming in the name of Yahweh. That's referenced in Psalms 118 and 26. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And so they was praising Praising the name of uh, Yahweh Shai, blessed is the sovereign, the king, the Messiah who is coming in the name of Yahweh. And so that's that's why you have to keep, when we say God, you have to keep God in, in, in context. God is Yahweh of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yahweh is his real name. That's this name here, Yahweh. And so you have to keep it in context. He is Yahweh of Abraham. Isaac and Jacob. People don't want to say it that way. For obvious reasons, they want to say, oh, he's the God of everybody. That's not what the scripture says. The scripture says he's Yahweh of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's what the scripture says. And it says Yahweh Shai, who we call Jesus, he is the Savior of Israel. He come to save his people from their sin. That's what the scripture says. That's the context. But people don't want to say it in context because they want to keep up with their religion. But they gave praise and glory and honor to Yahweh for Yahweh Shai, who's coming to save Israel. Peace in heaven and esteem and glory in the highest. Verse 39, And some of the Pharisees from the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your taught ones. So these Pharisees, again, they practice Judaism. They are Jewish because they practice this religion. Because anybody can be Jewish because you're practicing a, a religion called Judaism. And so they didn't even have to be real Jews of the tribe of Judah. Anybody can be a, to, could be Jewish practicing a religion. And so they was telling Yahweh Shai, rebuke your disciples. Because <laughs> they praising Yahweh Shai as the Messiah. As the son of Yahweh, hallelujah, the savior of Israel. And they don't like it because according to their religion, that Yahweh Shai is not the Messiah. He's not the savior of Israel. They, they think he's going to come another way because the way he's coming, they don't think that's the scriptures are being fulfilled. But they didn't read the scriptures or they took take them out of context. But this is exactly how the scriptures are going to be fulfilled. So they don't like what's going on. And that's how all of the people are, of the religions are. Because they take the scriptures out of context. And when someone tell them, well, that's not what the scripture says. And tell them about all these false religions that they're a part of. And that Yahweh doesn't have anything to do with it. And Yahweh Shai doesn't have anything to do with their religion. Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. They get mad. Verse 40. But he answering said to them, I say to you that if these shall be silent, the stones would cry out. He said, you don't want that to happen because I'm going to be praised. Yahweh, the, the, the father of, of, of Israel, he's going to be praised. And, and I'm going to be praised as the Messiah of the children of Israel. And so if they don't cry out and, and give praise to Yahweh, these very stones would cry out. Hallelujah. Verse 41. And as he came near, he saw the city and wept over it. And so at this point, he's looking at Jerusalem, but more so he's looking at the people of Jerusalem. And so he's weeping 
more so over the people. And the people are the southern kingdom of Judah with Benjamin called Jews. That's who the Jews are, the, the southern kingdom of Judah. Not all the 12 tribes of Israel are Jews. Only the southern kingdom with Judah and Benjamin. The apostle Paul was of the tribe of Benjamin, and he was considered a Jew because the, the southern kingdom consists of Judah and Benjamin, and so the, the southern kingdom was called Jews. And so he's looking over Jerusalem, he's looking over the people, and he's weeping over it because they won't believe as a whole. A lot of them caught up in Judaism, this religion, Judaism. And that's the same thing that's happening today. A lot of us don't know any better. We're caught up in these religions called Christianity and Islam. Yahweh Shai doesn't have anything to do with any religion. Yahweh of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob doesn't have anything to do with any religion. And so Yahweh Shai, he, he, was, he was saddened because of the way we were as a people. He wept over it, wept over the city, wept over Jerusalem. He's weeping over the tribe, the, the southern kingdom of Judah. Verse 42, if you only knew even today the matters for your peace, but now that you are hidden, but now they are hidden from your eyes. So this made him really sad and that he actually wept because we would, we were stiff necked and hard hearted then and now. If you only knew even today, he's saying the same thing right now, today, this very minute. If you only even knew who you are, that you're the chosen people, and that I'm your Messiah, the matters of your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes because you don't want to accept the truth. You want to go ahead and keep hanging on to your religion Judaism and Hinduism and Buddhism and Islam and Christianity and Catholicism and Seventh-day Adventists and Mormonism and Jehovah Witness. You want to keep hanging on to your religion instead of believing the gospel of the kingdom. It's not about any religion. Verse 43, because days shall come upon you when your enemies shall build a rampart around you and surround you and press you on all sides. And that's what happened when Jerusalem was destroyed. The, the temple and the Romans destroyed. And people think a second temple is going to be built <laughs> because they don't understand the scriptures. And if you don't understand, uh, understand the scriptures, you don't understand prophecy. And so all the scriptures are about prophecy. And so the temple is, is going to be built. As a matter of fact, it's being built this very second, right before your very eyes. The people are the temple. <laughs> All of the southern kingdom of Judah, the chosen tribe, the chosen, the, the, the southern kingdom of Judah is the ch chosen tribe. We're being built right before your very eyes. We're coming into the knowledge of the truth about who we are. Because they shall come upon you when your enemy shall build a rampart around you. The, the, the Romans came in and they destroyed the temple. They destroyed the building. Yahweh Shai said, destroy this temple and I'll raise it up on the third day. Stephen said, Yahweh doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. <laughs> and so he said that the temple was going to be destroyed. The temple has been destroyed. And now the temple is being rebuilt. He said, you'll be surrounded and pressed in on all sides. You won't have no way of escape. You're going to have to run because the temple is going to be destroyed. And so that's why the southern kingdom of Judah is, is, is scattered to the four corners of the earth everywhere. But Yahweh Shai, he's building the temple even right now with all of the 12 tribes of Israel, but specifically the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin. By us coming into the knowledge of the truth of who we are. We are the temple that's being built. <laughs> but people think it's going to be a physical temple. It's not a physical temple. It's a physical people. A physical Judah. That's if you want to call that a physical temple. <laughs> but it's not a, a, a brick, mason, brick and mortar temple. It's a people temple. Hallelujah. 
Yahweh dwells in people. He doesn't dwell in temples made by hand. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 44. And dash you to the ground and your children within you, and they shall not leave in you one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation. And so that's what happened to the, the city of, of Jerusalem when the temple was destroyed because we didn't understand the scriptures. We was too much caught up on religion and Judaism. We didn't understand our visitation that Yahweh Shai is the Messiah. And it's the same way it's going to be when he comes back because we're still caught up in all these different religions and we don't know what the scripture says about the chosen people. We want to think it's about everybody. It's not about everybody. It's not about humanity. It's only about the chosen people. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 45. And having entered into the set-apart place, the temple, he began to drive out those selling and buying in it. The same way they was doing then is the same way they're doing now. They're using you, all of the 12 tribes of Israel, as merchandise. All of these 501c3 corporations, religions, are using you as merchandise, selling and buying. You don't know any difference. You're thinking you're doing the work of the ministry, but you're caught up in all these different religions. And you're not doing the work of the kingdom. Hallelujah. And you're giving tithes to people that don't need, not even authorize to receive it because you think you're deceived. That's why. <laughs> you think you're doing the work of the kingdom. Like Paul, the apostle, thought he was doing the work of the kingdom, destroying the believers, the disciples that, that was believing in Yahweh Shah till he met Yahweh Shah on the road to Damascus. Some of y'all need Yahweh Shah to meet y'all on the road wherever you're headed. Because you think you're doing the work. But if you're caught up in all these religions, you're not doing the work of the kingdom of heaven. Because Yahweh doesn't have anything to do with any 501c3 corporation religion. Judaism, Christianity, Islam, any other religion. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 46. Saying to them, it has been written, my house is a house of prayer. But you have made it a den of, th of robbers. And so that's what all these 501c3 corporations are about. It's about the money, honey. They're robbing you. Robbing you blind. Because they want your membership. And the membership equals tithes and offering. So they're robbing you. They're a den of robbers. But you can't see that because you're so caught up in thinking that you're doing what's right. You're not. You're part of these religions. All of these religions are going to be destroyed. They are the Babylonian whore. <laughs> Catholicism, Islam, Buddhism, Christianity, Judaism, all the religions, every last one of them. You're going to be destroyed. Verse 47. And he was teaching daily in the set-apart place, the temple, but the chief priests and the scribes and the leaders of the people were seeking to destroy him. And so as Yahweh Shai was teaching in the temple, the chief priests, again, these are the religious folks. They're caught up in Judaism. They're Jewish. <laughs> the priests, the scribes, and the leaders of the people. They're caught up into these religions. Judaism. And they're teaching the people about all these different religions. And they... They don't want to accept Yahweh Shai as the Messiah, the Savior of Israel. That's what it boils down to. And even Christianity says, oh, well, but he come to save everybody. That's a lie. <laughs> he does not come to save everybody. They want to include, it's, it's not all inclusive. It's exclusive. It's just for the 12 tribes of Israel. <laughs> if you don't believe it, then you're going to be destroyed. And so they're seeking to destroy Yahweh Shai because he's saying that he's the, the, the son of Yahweh. <laughs> he's the, the Messiah, the Savior of Israel. Verse 48. But they did not find what they might do, for all the people were hanging on, hanging upon him, listening. And so all the disciples was continuing to believe the gospel of the kingdom, coming into the knowledge of the truth of the 
of, of who they are as the chosen people. And so that's what Yahweh Shai is doing now through this ministry and all the other ministries that's teaching you that Yahweh Shai is the Messiah of Israel, of all of the 12 tribes of Israel. And he's going to come. He's going to send his angels to gather us, to bring us back to the land that the Most High made a covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give it to us as his chosen people. And we will be his people, and he will be our Yahweh, our God. Hallelujah. Thank you for listening. See you next time. Shalom.